Stephanie, welcome. Good to have you with us. Let's tee up the week. There are a lot here, of there are a lot of numbers coming out that people need to process. Yeah. Take us through it. Tell us the ones you're going to be paying the most attention to. Sure. So it's economic data and earnings, as you highlighted. Of course, everyone's watching CPI and PPI. CPI is expected to be at 8.4 percent year over year growth. Uh, PPI at about 10 percent. And I don't really care about the actual number. We know inflation is hot. So if it comes in above or a little below, it's still hot. The Fed still has to act. And that's why they are. But I do think the retail sales number will be impressive, especially the control group. The control group feeds into the GDP and it's expected to rebound nicely month over month. 0.2% versus negative 1.2 last month. I think the consumer is in better shape, especially given that these stocks are trading so horribly. I think that's where there is an opportunity on the consumer side of things. In earnings in general for the S&P 500, Tyler, I'm looking for about 5% earnings growth for 1Q and about 10.8% total revenue growth for 1Q. If you exclude financials, you're actually going to do probably something close to 10 per, uh, 12% in the first quarter in earnings and 14% percent in revenue. So it's going to be in a busy, busy week. And, and I think there's a lot of banks that are on my top of mind list to watch. So let's go to a couple of those banks, which are the ones, that, some of the biggies that come out later this week. Uh, J.P. Yeah. Morgan, Wells Fargo, uh, Morgan Stanley. Uh, you say that if you look at the banks uh, across the, the whole universe of them, uh, that they are drags on the market right now in terms of earnings and revenue. Let's go through number one, J.P. Morgan. It's been... Uh, it, it has not been the superstar that it once was. I know, and it's so surprising. It's down 15% on the year. Uh, I think this is getting close. I don't own it yet, but I think it's getting close, Tyler, because it does trade about 1.5 times book. Historically, this, tr this stock has traded closer to two times book. So it's getting there. Uh, but we'll talk about some of the other names, which I think are actually even more attractive. The key to J.P. Morgan is expenses, because they did increase expense guide for 2022 last quarter by 9%. And that's why the stock hasn't done very well. The other key is what is their return on tangible common equity figure long term? They have a goal to get it to 17%. Do they talk about that? They're having an analyst day in May. I don't think they're Going to, I think they're going to wait and talk to talk about expenses and the details there and the ROTCE. But the quarter itself, I think you're going to have puts and takes. You're going to have higher rates, helps net interest income, net interest margins. Volatility helps trading, and credit will be benign. On the negative side, the volatility probably eats into M&A fees, debt and equity capital markets. So watch for this one. If it pulls back further, I think it could be attractive for the long term.